Hey class, welcome back. If you check out the board behind me, we're going to talk a little bit about rocks today, which is one of my very favorite subjects because geology was my thing back in the day. And if you check out the geology that's going on right here in Pacifica, you can't hardly ask for a better place to check out all the three different types of rocks that we're going to see in class today, metamorphic, sedimentary, and igneous rocks. We've got fantastic examples of them right here in our own backyard. So let's jump on in. We are in week 19 right now when I'm making this video. A quick note for all the classes about week 20, Monday and Tuesday of next week, we will have some guest speakers come on in. Look for an email where I give you the links, how we're going to join a giant Zoom meeting with Ms. Licata's class and check out some guest speakers, which will come on in. For the very first one, we don't need any extra materials, but for the remaining ones, about seven of them, we will have some materials that you'll pick up here at the good old IBL campus. Um, also, if you check out week 20 next week already, can you believe that? We are like racing through the year right now. All right, the rock cycle. One of the, of the cycles that we've talked about, the rock cycle is one of the ones that you might be saying, well, wait a second, rocks like this lump of coal that we talked about last week are inanimate. They're not living things. Yet, one of the things that amazes me is that you've got an inanimate object like this, a bunch of minerals coming together to make a rock that make life possible on this planet. Quick reviews from some of the things that we did last time are that the rock cycle is driven by the internal heat of the Earth. Remember, Earth has a lot of internal heat that's kind of left over from formation, but that wasn't enough to account for the amount of heat that we uh, know is coming from within the mantle, within the core. Turns out, and again, when you see the boxed letters up here, the boxed terms up here, these will be our terms for week 20. But the radioactive decay, the breakdown of some elements, that is why we started the year with a little bit of chemistry. And you might remember we talked about the old periodic table of elements. Some of those elements, you might remember, there's about 100 elements. Some of those elements are radioactive meaning they break down naturally over time. When they do, they release just a tiny bit of heat. But collectively, when you look at the amount of heat that's released, it keeps our planet hot in the inside and it drives the rock cycle. Also, we talked a little bit about Mars. Again, going back yet again to the movie The Martian, Mars is smaller. It does have internal heat, but not as much. We don't think that plates ever actually moved on Mars. Uh, if they did, they stopped a long time ago. Uh, rock cycle on Mars doesn't really exist like it does on Earth because there are no plate tectonics going on there. And the plate tectonics, again, are referred to up here as one of the key terms that we'll be going through. Now, the three types of rock, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. The sedimentary rock is really the reason we study the rock cycle more than anything in this particular class. Why? It's where one of the main um, proofs of evolution, of change over time, of natural selection comes from. If you look at the three types of rocks on the board, of those three, metamorphic, which is a type of rock that has been changed over time by heat and pressure, usually both. If you look at uh, igneous rocks, which is basically cooled off magma or lava, of those three types, sedimentary is the only type that holds fossils. When you look at fossils and sedimentary rock, for example, right here in town, if you've ever taken the walk along the Devil Slide Trail, it used to be the old Highway 1 that used to wind down the coast, you see the beautiful, beautiful layers of sedimentary rock, and I'll put a, a couple pictures up there in the notes, of the uh, sedimentary rock that lines uh, Highway 1 right as it drops off into the, the Pacific Ocean there. Gorgeous layer after layer after layer, and some of those layers are around in the neighborhood of 25 million years old. You're looking at a fantastic example of why we study this in this class. When you're looking at fossils, the younger fossils are towards the top. This is the law of superposition. The older fossils are towards the bottom of these layers. Very, very important that we check that out. Uh, way back when some people used to say that the Earth was only 6,000 years old, this was one of the key pieces of evidence when they said, no, wait a second. It's much older than that. We're talking somewhere in the neighborhood, you remember, of four and a half billion years old. So sedimentary rocks are the ones where we find the fossils. Very, very important. Moving on to the next part in the class today, I wanted to talk specifically about some of the things that you see right here in California. First of all, the rock cycle contributes materials we need for life. And in California, the way I've drawn Bad picture of the state right here, but the way I've drawn California right here, I've drawn a little line from San Francisco up towards the Sierra. Many of us, I know at one point or another, if we haven't already, we might do a drive from the Bay Area up to somewhere in the mountains where you're talking Tahoe, Truckee, Auburn, uh, you're talking maybe Yosemite. 
if you ever have the opportunity to do that, it's like a geologist's dream. It's a fantastic place to see all of the different types of rock in action. Now, right here in town, we've got a, I should have probably drawn the Sierra Nevadas hooking around a little bit here towards the Los Angeles area. Because here in town, Montera Mountain, an almost 2,000 foot mountain that marks the south end of Pacifica, Montera Mountain is a little chunk of the Sierra that has been moving north because of San Andreas broke it off and started moving it north. Oh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 20, 25 million years ago. So 20, 25 million years ago, Montera Mountain that you see here at the south end of town used to be down in LA. Give it another 25 million years, it'll be up there kind of close to the Oregon border where the Oregon border is now. So that's kind of cool. If you look at the Sierra Nevada, as I've drawn here, let's talk about the three types of rock on a drive from San Francisco, say up to Tahoe, if you've ever been up around that area. As you leave the Bay Area, lots of sedimentary rock. Where I'm standing right now, the ocean is only about 400 meters away from me right now. You've got a lot of sedimentary rock that was underwater only in the neighborhood of 20, 25 million years ago. This right here would have been off the coast of then California if you were to go back in time. As you slowly wind up in the mountains, and this is the exceptionally cool part, and again, I'll put some pictures of this online, you get up around Auburn, which is east of Sacramento, you see the rock very obviously change from layers and, and change from what looks like uh, mudstone uh, layers that are along the American River there to kind of a very dark reddish color, uh, even black. When you look at this, what you're seeing is metamorphic rock. Again, metamorphic rock from our three rock types. Metamorphic rock has been baked. It's been changed over time. Look at that one part, morph. To morph is to change, morphic rock. You're looking at rock that got baked by the internal heat of the earth and it got baked and pressed by the layers up above it. Where did that heat come from on those rocks? Check out this giant red blob I drew, I drew right here. At the beginning of classes today, I was showing a tiny, just a tiny chunk of the movie Free Solo where Alex Honnold is climbing up El Capitan in Yosemite. What he's climbing up is a giant piece of granite. Now, it's exceptionally cool. I love, love, love. I used to love rock climbing around the, the Sierra, still do. And whenever you climb a piece of granite, what you're really climbing on is a giant chunk of igneous rock that has cooled off. Now, in the case of the Sierra Nevada, that big black, part of the map that I try to draw in there. You're looking at a piece of uh, igneous rock. It's called a uh, giant pluton of rock that is actually cooled off underground. And as it cooled off, it solidified, made this very, very tough. Let me show you this example right here. Very, very tough rock. This right here is a piece of obsidian. You might find something like this. this is volcanic glass. This is chemically just about the same as the granite that you see in the Sierra. And it's a very, very hard igneous rock that doesn't ever have any fossils on it because it is just cooled off lava. And when you're standing somewhere in the Sierra, what you're really standing on is just the very, very tip of this giant piece of igneous rock that extends all the way. It's one of the largest in the world. It extends all the way from the volcanoes up in the northern part of the state, Lassen, Shasta, all the way to the southern part of the state where you've got the highest mountains in the contiguous United States here. Mount Whitney is down there at over 13,000 feet. So you've got some amazingly spectacular scenery, all thanks to the igneous rock that has been slowly pushed up through, ge through the geology, through the heat on the, uh, <laughs> excuse me, through the heat uh, of our planet that again, all the way cycles back to what we talked about at the very, very beginning, that heat that drives this whole thing, which is the decay of radioactive elements. So that's a quick run through of our notes for today. These will be posted online along with a couple of local pictures of igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary rock that you can find right here in Pacifica. Have a fantastic day, everybody, and I'll see you online. Bye-bye.